Okay guys, today we're going to talk about the efficient use of water while watering our turf grass areas on the campus. Hi, I'm Fred Thorne, Irrigation Manager of Landscape Services. Striving for the efficient water use of turf grass irrigating. What, one of the things in striving for efficient water use that uh, takes on a number of elements that play into efficient watering. Uh, distribution uniformity is what we're going to look at today. Uh, with that would be your scheduling of your sprinkler systems, knowing the type of soils that your plant material is in, the type of plant material and its water requirements, and of course your seasons. All this in your installation, the type of sprinkler heads you use, all this is under the umbrella of water efficiency. But today we're going to talk about distribution uniformity. Dis distribution uniformity is, is the, as it, the word says, when the sprinkler heads are adding or applying water to your turf grass area, how uniform is the distribution of it? And, and uh, one of the things that we will be doing to test this uniformity in like a sprinkler zone or an area is called audit. Audit is a form of a testing and uh, it's a way that we can measure the system and what we'll do for the audit is uh, we're going to go out to this we'll go out to a sprinkler area of grass place catch cuts throughout the area in a uh, pattern or a sequence uh, that we'll have to do in relationship with the sprinkler heads but we're going to set out catch cups the catch the actual water when the sprinklers running what we'll do in the first area that we're going to test is actually run it for an hour and when you use catch cups, place them at different places throughout, not too close to the head, so, sprinkler head so they're knocked over, and not outside of the area that you're testing. You want to space them out evenly, kind of a grid pattern, and uh, you want to make sure that you, whatever you use, we're going to use 60 of these, but whatever you use, make sure they all have the same diameter on the what's called the throat of the catch cup. We're going to approach this and looking at what we call distribution uniformity LQ. LQ stands for the low quarter. What we'll do is we'll lay out 60 of the cut, catch cups. We're going to take the low 25% of them that have the low readings, compare that with the others, and we will work out uh, an average of how long we need to water say we want to put one inch down in our whole grass area well this will give us a ratio of actually how long we have to water to apply make sure uh, one inch is applied in every area at least one inch when we get a distribution uniformity number through this that will give us the percentage of how how well our sprinkler system is overlapping so one of the things that we're doing here at the university is we're testing systems and I'm going to go to a particular area and show you one that needs to needs to have attention and it is it, we will be using two different kinds of sprinkler heads what is in there now is a rotary style head the larger rotary installed in 1970 plants have changed plants have grown gotten larger uh, the uh, landscape has changed a little bit in the area. The function of the sprinkler heads is a little bit outdated, and, uh, and uh, there's quite a bit of runoff on the sidewalk. So we feel that we're picking this area. We're going to test. We're going to do an audit and be able to be specific about what the distribution uniformity is. Go in, uh, find out the numbers on the DU low quarter, find out what it is on the present system there. We will be removing that system and installing a new system with more efficiency or more distribution uniformity and we will see how that affects efficiency and also affects the dollars we spend on on the water. Uh, I might mention right now too that uh, these procedures that I'm showing you, the distribution uniformity low quarter, what we use, may not uh, be the same thing that the University of Nebraska Agricultural uh, Department uses. So a little disclaimer here, this is what the turf grass irrigation, what we use for a guide on how we judge 
our sprinkler system. So, uh, all fairness due to, to what they may have. Uh, anyway, well, let's get going, go out to the field and uh, go to it. Okay, here we are at the test lot. Uh, we're placing out catch cups. I'm marking them so I can return back to the, each spot when I do my second test. Ouch, that hurts. Look at that water. That's what we want to avoid. The water being hit in the trees, hit in the sidewalk. And if, if a picture is worth a thousand words, check that out. Here I'm taking uh, measurements of my first test. And now I'll take a measurement of my second test. I want to make sure that I've got the same weather conditions and the time of day on each of my tests. We plan our work and work our plan. The fellows install efficiently. We move in on it. It's a little bit drastic, but when we saw sprinkler head hitting the tree and so forth, we want to make changes to improve that. This might seem like going to extreme to, to change the sprinkler system over to a distribution uniformity pattern that's, that's more uniform. But we're attacking several of the areas here. On this sprinkler system, we had rotaries that are hitting the trees, also hitting the building. The, also, the system was on a manual operation. The area supervisor had to come up whenever he wanted to water and manually turn on the valves. Uh, it was automated about six or seven years ago. We lost power due to construction in other areas. This area also, uh, we're putting a timer in on the building so it controls the watering period. We're dividing the area up also into two different zones. On the east side were some heads that were sprinkling with this is on the north side. Therefore, uh, there's more sun exposure and, and we can set the east side of the building with a different watering schedule. Uh, they're being more efficient with our use of water when we schedule. Plus, there's two zones on the north of the sidewalk here and across on another sidewalk next to another building that had been had lost power for several years. We're tying those up to our timer up here, therefore freeing the supervisor from having to turn on these stations manually and, and use up all that time. So we're being more efficient with our water uniformity, our distribution. I can't wait till this thing's done. I'm excited about it to show you what it looks like when we're done. We will take measurement of the uniformity and have that formula for you. And uh, also the time that, we've, that we're saving and labor and uh, efforts to, uh, to, to uh, irrigate this area. It's going to come out really nice. I'm really excited about what's going on here. Here we finish the construction with the new stream spray head. Okay, now we're going to do a little classroom math with our distribution uniformity. Remember, we put out 60 catch cups throughout the area that we're testing. I have 60 different numbers that represent the different locations of the catch in that test area. When we're looking at distribution uniformity, what we're looking for is the lowest quarter of the readings that we picked out. Through those 60 readings that we took, I pulled off one-fourth of the readings here, which represents one-fourth of 60 is 15 readings, and got, I pulled out the lowest readings out of my catch cups. That gives me this total of 1.8 inches. So that would give me the lowest quarter, 1.8 inches, divided by 15 catches, gives me the average low quarter, the average low catch of 0.12. Now, what I want to do is find the average over the total. So I total up the low quarter, 1.8 plus 4.63 plus 5.53 plus 6.28. The total of my volume is 18.04 inches. Now I divide that by the total number of catches, 60, and that gives me 0.3 as an average. To find my distribution uniformity, I take the low quarter, 0 0.2, 0 0.12, divide that by 0.3, and that gives me 0.4 or 40%.
So our distribution uniformity in a number in our first testing is 40%. Now, after redesign and a new installation on the system with the MP rotators, we put out the 60 catch cups again. 60 different readings. And now from that, I pull out the low quarter again. I pulled out 15, 15 of my lowest amounts. That gives me uh, 5.28. So my low quarter is 5.28 divided by 15 e equals 0.35. Go back to find the, the average catch. Add all 60. Again, 5.28 plus 8.85 plus 8.19 plus 8.78 totals 31.1. Divided by 60, again, 60 cash cuts, gives me 0.52. To find the low quarter of the second, or the distribution uniformity of the second reading, I take the 0.35 and divide it by 0.52, and that gives me 67%. Now, in how that affects our scheduling, what that does for us, my first audit test, to have a perfect system or perfect coverage and perfect uniformity, it would be 100%. So that, uh, in a, a perfect system would be 100% or 1. To find my scheduling multiplier, what would give me 100% coverage, I divide the low quarter into 1 and that gives me 2.5. To water long enough to get adequate water to the low measuring areas, I'd have to water the system 2.5 hours. The uh, sixth edition irrigation book put out by the Irrigation Association suggests that when you get into a 40% or, or lower uh, distribution uniformity, don't even bother. Tear it up, start over. You don't even work with 40%. It's way too low. And that's one of the reasons we did what we did. Our second audit proved to be 67%. So our scheduling multiplier, we divide into one. If it was, if you wanted 100% uniformity, divide the 67 to one. That gives us a 1.5. Very acceptable. These two numbers are 67%. The average spray system puts out 65%. So if you do your look at the textbooks, you'll find that the average coverage on that would be 60, 65. So we're, what, we're above that, that. And then your scheduling multiplier, divide the 67 into 1. We got to reach to get, if we want to get an inch watering on everywhere, be sure we got it, we water for an hour and a half. But anyway, that tells us also that by changing this over and in increasing our uh, low quarter adjustment, with a scheduling multiplier, we're saving 26% of watering. Now what you've seen on our project today, uh, or this week, we've automated an area that didn't, wasn't automated before, and labor had to be spent turning the sprinklers on and off, and that will save us dollars we, in labor. We also have an efficient design, not watering the tree or getting a lot of water on the sidewalk. That saves us dollars. And then we also, an element of efficient watering is the improved distribution uniformity, which saves us dollars. And in that case, it's just a matter of time before it pays for itself and then continues to save the University of Nebraska both water and time. Now, with that said, I want to, uh, uniformity also is a factor that a term that can be used in the soils we use. And uh, my compliments to the landscape services of the University of Nebraska for making sure that unified soils are used in our new projects. And when projects that we redo, we're making sure that the soils are, are uh, all consistent, plus the uniformity on how uh, level the ground is. The more level it is, it affects our uniformity of not just the 
you know, we've talked about the distribution uniformity. There's also a uniformity in absorption and, and how the water moves on the land. So anyway, in those aspects, we're saving the University of Nebraska uh, dollars and water by doing efficient design. Now, the takeaway I want you to take from this, when you're working on your home or your area, you can use as many catch cups, but remember you want to use a number that's divided by four. For example, if I use 20 catch cups in testing a small area, then five of them would give me the low quarter. You'd take out that measurement of the low quarter and use that as your low quarter like I did on this. Divide the low quarter average by the total average of catch cups that you use, and then you'll get your distribution uniformity. So I hope that you uh, can take away uh, uh, this and test your areas, your home, or your institution to try to improve your distribution uniformity and to use water wisely. So now, balls in your court.